hey, I made 128K last month in profit. I want to hit 167K a month in profit. This is basically a day by day breakdown of how I'm doing it. So, first things first, I'm not actually going to be holding the K pop mic like this for all of my videos. I'm just doing this because I'm upgrading my setup right now and I have yet to go to Ikea to get myself a desk. I also have yet to go to Ikea to get myself the clamp mount thing that I need in order to make this all work. So, it's going to be a little bit different from my usual daily check in. Um, but, anywho, it doesn't matter too much. Let's actually run into, uh, let's, let's do what we normally do. Let's start with the QA and then after that, we're going to do a little bit of strategy and then after that we'll just call it um so i'm just going to head on over to nick's arrive daily updates here i'm running into this issue where uh, for whatever reason youtube is just not loading well on my main browser i think it's one of my browser extensions i don't know exactly what it is might be ublock origins let me just try removing this might also be the one of ten tool that i have set up here but it's just taken forever anyway looks like it's a little bit better off now Let's jump over and see where we land. Nope, that is just the worst. That is absolutely terrible. Okay, there we go. So, uh, hit 73 subscribers yesterday. Looks pretty good. Let's go to community and see if there are any comments. Looks like it. We got one from Uj. Fantastic. We also got one from Brandon. Let me jump in and take a peek. Uj says, really appreciate the detailed breakdown and walkthrough of your decision-making processes. Nick, do you think automation agency models are hard to scale beyond a certain point? Are you planning to dive into the world of paid ads down the line? Would you love a, would love a video on some hiring alpha? I know you made one a long time ago, but love a fresh perspective because I assume the 25K a month you generate from left click. The fulfillment or implementation is done by devs on your team. No, it is not. It is done by me. How big is your team at the moment? Uh, two people. Reason for my questions, I've been saying yes to all sorts of projects last few months. Custom code, no code, low code, cold email, voice agents, full-time job, and finding myself spread thin. Getting close to that point where I need to think about bringing on some help. Cool, man. Well, I know you already have a full-time job, which is fantastic. So I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes. You're probably working between six to eight hours on the full-time job. And then afterwards, you're going and, you know, looking to get new clients with some lead gen method. And then also uh, courting them, selling them, then jumping on like client fulfillment calls and just doing everything. So let me be abundantly clear, you're doing a ton. And I don't think anybody would be remiss to wonder about whether or not it's time to bring on some help. So what I would do in your shoes, like basically exact actionable, is I'd ask myself how much money you want to make in the near term. Set yourself a near term realistic goal. Uh, I think you were in Toronto and you were a reasonably high earning software engineer from the last time we chatted, because I believe we, we chatted over the phone, right? So uh, what are you making? Like, I don't know. I, I'm not going to try and, you know, share with the entire world or whatever, but let's say your, your near-term goal is you want to hit $25,000 a month. Tabulate your, um, income from the job, tabulate the income that you're making from these custom projects, tabulate any other income that you have, add it up, see the distance between that and then $25,000 a month, then figure out your current internal hourly rate. So maybe it's like a hundred dollars an hour or something. And then just ask yourself, okay, let's say I'm at 15 K and I want to hit 25 K. That's, you know, $10,000, which is an additional 100 hours. Do I have 100 hours in my schedule to fit? If the answer to that question is no, and it probably is, then you just need to change how you're doing things a little bit. That doesn't necessarily mean hire. That could mean working with higher paying clients, right? Because, uh, you know, if you could just double your prices and instantly make two times for the amount of time that you are spending, you can get a large portion of the way there. It could also mean just doing more lead gen, believe it or not, because by doing more lead gen, you'll have more opportunities available to you that you'll be able to use to pick the best performing ones, as opposed to maybe the sort of scarcity mindset that you may or may not be in, I don't know, Ush, where you're just selecting the first pressure that comes, even if it's like a lower internal hourly rate of like 50 bucks an hour, right? So the mindset that I use in order to make these decisions is I'm basically all looking at this thing called expected value. I'm like, what is the expected value of taking on this client? What is the expected value of this decision? Is this the highest expected value that I could choose at this given moment in time? I think if you were to try hiring, what you'd quickly find, at least in my experience, is it's not as easy as to make an Upwork post, get 10 people, review 10 people, do an interview, and then hire somebody. You basically add an additional daily time sink when it comes to management. And so the equation that you need to be able to answer in order to make hiring effective for you is does the daily management time that it takes for me to deal with this person plus the money that I'm spending them to fulfill this project is that less value than the value they're providing by actually doing the work usually at the beginning part of hiring it's actually more so like it, you don't actually get profitable on the hire until they you know get up to date they're onboarded they're trained they're all that stuff so yeah my 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 two cents is you probably don't need to right now unless you have a much higher goal than i'm thinking 50k 100k 200k a month um if if those are your near-term goals then definitely you're going to need to hire and i may be misunderstanding exactly how much money you're making as well so just take all that with a grain of salt um, but that's probably yeah that hopefully would answer that question 
So do I think the automation agency model is hard to scale beyond a certain point? I do. I do. Um, I think it gets harder and harder. Like it was harder for me at 72K a month than it was at 25K a month for sure. Um, and you know, I'm not going to say it peaks because it doesn't. There are a lot of people that are doing more than that. But you just need to keep in mind that like after a certain point in time, you're no longer an automation agency. You're like a specific niche service tool blueprint providing, uh, not blueprint, but like system providing agency. Let me give you an example. We had... Um, Saad, who was uh, crushing it in uh, my communities, and I mean, he, he still is. He scaled to 80K a month, but he very quickly pivoted from selling, like, for being an automation agency to being a lead generation agency because he just started selling cold email systems. All of his systems were hyper optimized for cold email, right? And like outbound lead gen. So, though, the, he, he, he had this transition. If you start off as an AI automation agency, but then you find that there's a super high ROI delivering some sort of CRM project, well, you're, you're quickly going to be like a recruitment agency accelerator crm provider more so than you're going to be an automation agency so do i think it's hard to scale beyond a certain point if you stick with the like ai automation agency idea yeah probably right around about a million dollar a year run rate um this is just how most agencies are though to be honest like they'll sort of plateau i'm um, right around there because that's the point at which you start hiring managers to, to manage people as opposed to you and that's just really tricky to get right yeah so i'll definitely check out the video on hiring alpha i think that might be valuable Okay, great. Um, Brendan says, loving these daily build and public updates, Nick. Thanks, man. Quick question. How much coding knowledge is required realistically to be able to extremely proficiently run an automation agency considering you did have a foundation before starting yours? I know that Make and NADN are no-code platforms, but your extensive knowledge in coding does give you that unfair advantage, which I think is great. But I want to know how much of that do you attribute to your success at running the agency, or do you really think that's irrelevant? So I don't think that's irrelevant. It allowed me to get up and running much quicker than most other people. But I should note that I had no code experience before I had coding experience. Basically, the way that my journey was, was I started developing no code experience around 2018, 2019. 2020 is when I started doing self-learning for computer programming, just because I was starting to play around with these models at the time. And then I quickly realized, oh shit, there's actually more money in these no code tools and in building my own business using these no code tools and all this computer programming stuff. So that happened right around mid 2020. And then, you know, one second copy started to take off. Then after one second copy took off, obviously I started the automation agency. So do I think it's required to have good coding skills? No. I actually think that the value of coding skills is plummeting with every passing month because of AI tools allowing us to do the vast majority of the work we want in natural language. I should note that that means that the value of no code tool skill is increasing, but eventually no code tool skill will decrease as well just because you'll be able to do it all in natural language, right? It's not, you know, it's kind of a zero sum game in that respect. So uh, yeah, it did definitely give me an unfair advantage. Would I recommend it for everybody that's starting now? No, I would not recommend you spending like however many months I did, five, six months, like basically doing a whole computer science degree without the paper. Um, would not recommend that. What I'd recommend is maybe you spend a week. You get up and running on some fund, uh, fundamentals and foundations like uh, JavaScript, right? Some, some JSON, some quick stuff like dot notation, like how to do functions. Most of it is syntact uh, syntactual, syntactual or syn syntactic in nature. And then once you know that, right, it, you know, whether you can place a semicolon, right, doesn't really matter in 2025, right? Because we have tools that'll automatically do like linting and, and formatting and stuff for you. And if you're going to use a no code tool anyway, like none of that stuff's going to matter because you just have to use their format instead. So spend a week getting up and running with like some some JavaScript and coding fundamentals. Maybe take like your first Codecademy week or something, take you like, you know, four hours in total. That's enough for you to do 99% of what I can do. You don't need that extra 1%. And then that's also the perfect ratio between like learning and doing. Um, it'll be a lot easier and more efficient for you than if you were to do something like I did. So highly recommend. Give it a try. Let me know how that goes. Awesome. So thank you very much to Brendan and Uj for asking these questions. I'm just going to heart them so you guys know that I did indeed answer. I'm now going to really quickly do some brand stats. And then I'm not going to have much time for strategy today aside from talking about the studio that I'm setting up um, for obvious reasons. Also, my right arm is already hurting from holding up this mic. I don't know how singers do this shit for like three hours, man. Okay, uh, how many subs am I at? 75, perfect. So let's go 75 here. I went up nine subs in the last 24 hours, fantastic. My Instagram, oh shit. Uh, I don't have my phone with me, that sucks. Um, okay, well, we're just gonna go instagram.com slash nick underscore seraph, and I'm just gonna estimate. We'll do... 12,400. Um, I should note that I got banned from Instagram yesterday. Let's get 12,450. Here we go. I got banned from Instagram yesterday. So um, my profile was inaccessible for like a good, I don't know, 10 hours, which is why the follower growth is so low. 
I don't really know what happened there. I'm not sure if somebody's just like mass reporting me because they don't like me or because, I don't know, kept on saying that I'd been flagged for abusing their terms and conditions, their community guidelines. But how the hell is anybody supposed to know, right? All right. Uh, I unfortunately have to do the thing where it takes me forever to load this again. So let me just see if I could open this up. No. Um, let's just go at Nick Sarayev. See maybe if I could pull it directly from the numbers. Nope. Okay, 48,775. Big subscriber day. 418 from yesterday. And that's like not even done, man. We got a lot of time. Wow. That's cool. So I don't know what happened, but my subscriber count just picked up, or my growth in subscriber count just picked up again, which is awesome. Um, I really don't like being around the 150 level. If I could stay around 300 level, then how many days are there left in the year? Days in year. Okay, yeah, no, no shit. Left. 322. So if I do 322 times 300, that's 96,600. And if I add that to my current sub count of 48,700, boing, that's 145,300. That's pretty close to my 150K goal. So realistically, I need to go a little bit more than 300 a day in order to make this work. I think I could get there just by starting to cannibalize the term AI agent, which I'm going to begin doing now uh, because I'm just getting to that point where, um, you know, now I have a bunch of NA Den tutorials down. They're good NA Den tutorials. I'm not getting into the, the, the live building and stuff. This is sort of like the next logical step. We'll see how that goes. I have a lot of competition. NA Den's blowing the hell up. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give that a try. Okay. And as I mentioned, I don't have room to like do the drawing and stuff that I normally do. So um, let's just really quickly run over what the what the day is, is going to look like. I have a couple of tasks in mind. One, I want to set the studio up so that I don't have to hunch over a tiny little coffee table, um, obviously. I want this to look really good, um, but I also, I didn't really like the fact that my previous studio was in my living room. So anytime that, uh, I don't know, I'd have guests over or something like that, we wouldn't really have a dining table and there'd just be this big ugly lighting setup in the corner. I also did a big lifestyle audit yesterday. If you guys um, saw that or saw me talk about that, what I ended up doing was I came up with a lot of bugs or friction points, I should say. It was something like, um, you know, 50 or 60. And this is what it looks like. Um, I basically have a massive list of things that I want to improve. Like I don't turn on my sun lamp first thing in the morning. That sucks. I don't have enough chargers around my house. The cables by my office are extremely disorganized. I have to turn on the lights manually for my studio. My monitor, my camera, my teleprompter, blah, 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 blah. I got like a million in one of these things, right? So that's actually the motivation behind me changing the studio. Um, I love doing these like lifestyle audits. I love finding friction points in my life and then fixing them, but obviously it takes a fair amount of time. And though it delivers large expected gains in the future, it does take away from things that I could be doing now. So um, basically the roadmap for the day is I'm going to Ikea. I'm getting myself a bunch of studio stuff, probably going to blow through 400 bucks on it. Going to get like a new desk, for instance. I'm going to get uh, like a way to conceal all the cables because I don't really like how that looks. I'm going to get some stuff from my background, maybe some posters if I could find them. Um, make, make it look all sexy and pretty. And then I'm going to record a video on my new setup for, uh, I'm basically going to create a content generator system in NADN. I may throw the term agent in there, even though it's not technically an AI agent, or maybe I'll find a way to like add an AI agent to the beginning of it to like scope it out. That might be pretty cool. And then I think that would, you know, people would probably like that quite a bit. Um, and then after I'm done that, I'm going to continue going down my lifestyle audit and just banging, banging these things out one by one by one. So I'm going to have a pretty packed day. It's going to be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Hopefully you guys appreciate this video. If you guys have any more questions, Uj, Brendan, anybody else, uh, feel free to ask. I'm just doing these to, as I mentioned, pump up engagement on the channel, comments, improve all that stuff. So eventually I'm, I'm just going to have to do one a day for time reasons, but you guys get to take advantage of it until then. Cheers.